Uh, we're off to a great start. The atmosphere is charged. We're having a great conference. I'm excited to be here as MC for Connect 2014. I'll be back and forth to handle questions, introductions, uh, do some housekeeping. But right now, uh, I'd like to share a few thoughts with you. And uh, I'd also like to thank and congratulate Joe Philport, Larry Hennessy, Nancy, who of course is not here, and Stephen Friedis for a great conference and for all their coordination. And thank you for your work. The, now again, uh, this is one of those conferences where you're not being told to turn off your phones. Definitely silence them. Maybe if, you're, if you really don't want to be looking down all the time, uh, pretend you're on an airplane and put it onto airplane mode. Uh, but you can tweet. So take it off of airplane mode. Tweet connect2014, hashtag OOH, hashtag connect2014. So how many of you were here six years ago, which was the last time I emceed this event? Quite a few. So you may, be, you may remember a few things about that, but the real core to the presentation that I gave then was a call to action for the out-of-home industry. I talked a lot about digital. I talked a lot about data and research. Talked a lot about the future and where the business was heading. And most of that future has come through. Six years ago, it was a warning, as I suggested, you look into the future and see the future that was written for the advertising, marketing, and media businesses. And there was a disconnect at that point, I felt, between the past and where the industry had been and the future and where the industry needed to go. And today, I'm very happy to be back here in an industry that six years later has heeded the call to action has listened to the warnings, has seen and met the future, and to be here at an industry that's stronger today than it ever has been. So congratulations to you, and how about a round of applause for this industry and the leaders of this industry and the job you're doing to move into the future. Congratulations. Now, in that context, uh, those of you who were here remember that I had mentioned at the beginning of my talk something called Twitter. And I asked, had anyone heard of Twitter? And not one person raised their hand, which was not unusual in an event of any type, except if you were in Silicon Valley, because Twitter had just kind of launched and come into the public eye, but wasn't known. And, and I thought it was relevant for the industry to know about Twitter because of the idea of short form messaging. And Twitter became somewhat of a meme throughout the, con throughout the conference, a joke. People were laughing, but people were also beginning to think in 140 characters. They were kind of thinking in, a, in an out-of-home context. And of course, Twitter has become what it is today. And as I prepared for speaking here today, I wanted to come up with a similar meme, something that could be a theme not only for today and tomorrow, but a theme somewhat for the future of this industry and where it's heading. And what I think is incredibly important is the Internet of Things. Now, many of you, I'm sure, have heard of the Internet of Things. I'm sure there are some of you who have not heard of it, or if you've heard of it, are not really that familiar with what its relevance is to the out-of-home industry, because it's extraordinarily important and extraordinarily relevant. There are a trillion connected devices today, whether it's cars, uh, being connected to their surroundings and recognizing when you're about to crash or watching something when you're backing up and connecting. Cars connected to billboards. Whether it's walking into a retail store and having a chip embedded in your clothes that tell that store's management whether you're a, uh, an upscale Donna Karen shopper or a Gap shopper or a Walmart shopper, just by the nature of what you're wearing and the chips that are embedded. Today, there are a billion trips embedded. By the end of this decade, there will be 14 to 15 billion, trillion, trillion, I'm sorry, trillion chips embedded. A trillion today, 14 to 15 trillion chips embedded. It's a $1 trillion 
uh, business today, the Internet of Things. It will be a $50 trillion business by the end of the decade. And this is a business that the out-of-home industry is going to be a leader in. The Internet of Things is mobile, but it's beyond mobile because it's not consumer activated. It's activated by chips that are speaking to each other. Whether it's Google acquiring Nest, and Nest being appliances that are chip embedded, talking to your mobile phone so that you can read what you need in your refrigerator, or get an alarm notification that's going off because Nest, it's a Nest alarm, or any kind of information in and around the home that Google will now know and will be communicating to you through your mobile device. The Internet of Things is the future across all media landscapes, across all advertising landscapes, and I urge you to pay more attention to how the Internet of Things can become a tool, a resource, for exponentially growing the out-of-home industry, and especially the digital side of the out-of-home industry, and I'll show you how and why those dollars are available to you. In that context, next door, uh, you may have noticed the, the PRISM, a lot of people with the PRISM badges. That's a retail conference. And at that conference, they're sharing technology for the future of retail. And in there, you have iBeacon and uh, Sonic Notify and other beacon capabilities that retailers are installing in the store to recognize chips uh, and to recognize your mobile device. Now, I think, frankly, that we should all go there and they should all come here. We should be integrating the two conferences and connecting. But if you can sneak in and take a look at some of the technologies that are being presented at their trade show and maybe encourage some of their people to come over and look at some of the vendors that are in our trade show, I think it'd probably be a good idea for the retailing industry and the out-of-home business to come together in partnerships and lockstep because the future is together. And that means the future of the consumer and the future of the out-of-home industry are in lockstep as well. Now, as I look at the real economics of our business and some of the issues, uh, let me share with you some numbers and data that I think are going to be interested. And we'll be seeing more from Ben Swinberg in a few minutes on his forecasts and projections. But basically, we're an industry that will grow about 4.5% a year. And I'm going to keep referring to this as our industry and our business. And for those of you who don't know, I know a lot of you know this, I started out and out of home. I'm passionate about this business. My first job in New York was at Metro Media Outdoor selling bus and subway advertising. Uh, we had no data then. Uh, we only could go to the clients because there were no out-of-home specialists even then, uh, for the most part, at the agencies. This is an industry that's grown exponentially since then. But that career, that training, that education that I had in, we won't say what year that was, uh, led me to radio, to television, and to a great career working with many of the companies that are in here, but across the full spectrum and landscape of the marketing and advertising business. This business is at the foundation of our industry. And what's inter interesting as you track growth, it's pretty much right at the projected growth for advertising, roughly 4 to 5% annually between now and the end of the decade. So it's, a dec it's an industry for which demand is kind of growing if you call our growth of advertising GDP, it's kind of growing at GDP, but it's not exceeding it. And the question becomes, how do you advance beyond GDP? And the answer is that you look at the supply-demand equations, and you recognize that while demand is growing at roughly 4.5% 4 4 a year, supply is growing at an exponentially faster rate. And this does not include mobile. Supply is growing because of digital, because of board acceleration, for a lot of different reasons. But this is the dynamic that's led the agency holding companies to move into what you're hearing a lot about, programmatic and automated buying, because they see the, the supply-demand equation flipping into their benefit and to their advantage, and they're setting up the systems and models internally. And this creates a real issue and question that you're confronting as an industry along with every other medium, and that is how are the agencies going to be reorganizing themselves 
over the next several years, because the out-of-home specialist's role is dramatically changing in the industry and being integrated in and to, reporting to, those with responsibility for all media. And there's becoming a single media marketplace embedded within the Zaxis and the Acuins and the Cadrions at every single holding company. And Matt Seiler of IPG Media Brands has said that 50% of all media will be in the programmatic and automated models by the end of 2016. Whether that comes true or not, we're clear that every agency is moving toward automated and uh, programmatic buying, and that's an issue that we need to understand, accept, relate to, but also understand that that's a commoditized view of the business, and on the other side of the equation, we need to develop value and premium capabilities and resources that get us to the clients, get us to the senior activation people at the agencies who do have a different role at the agencies now than before. It's not just to buy, it's not just to plan, it's to think. And we need to be part of that thinking. So in the context of looking at this bifurcation of the marketplace, for 100 years our industry has been focused on awareness, reach, and frequency. That is the goal of advertising, awareness, reach, frequency. Recently we're adding a few concepts to that, but that fundamental reality is what drove for a hundred years our challenge to John Wanamaker, who as you all know and hear in every presentation at every conference in the history of advertising conferences, half the money I spend on advertising is wasted. The trouble is, I don't know which half. Well, I think we've been misquoting John Wanamaker for these 125 years since he said those words. Misquoting him, what he really said, I think, is half the money I spend on advertising is wasted. And the truth is, I don't care which half. Why? Because advertising works, and it's cheap. And it's the cheapest way to create awareness, reach, and frequency. And beyond that, I don't need my advertising to do sales. That's what I have the 70% of my marketing budget that goes toward below the line sales promotion. That's what that's for. Advertising is to create reach and frequency. So as we look beyond the awareness, reach, frequency model, and as we look to the future of how we create premium value, we do need to look toward engagement. We do need to look at how is our medium delivering interactivity, response, motivation, and most importantly, sales and ROI. And this is where the term big data comes in and why big data is so important. And we hear this term and it's tossed out and we don't even know what it really means, but what it really means to us is the connection of advertising to sales for your clients. And that's the area where that every medium is struggling with and every part of our business is looking at because that's where the premium value, we have to be embedded with the Zaxis and with the Acuins and on the programmatic and automated side and we have to have the right data and congratulations to the industry for the great uh, research that we'll hear a little more about from this stage later today that's being introduced this week. But fundamentally, as you look at this connection of out of home to sales and ROI, we look at a huge opportunity because 70% of the marketer's budget is invested in what we've called for years below the line. And thanks to digital, below the line is now moving to above the line because it's more efficient for marketers to perform their below the line couponing, sales promotion, trade promotion, direct marketing, event marketing, experiential marketing, social, PR, through media partners and to shift those budgets from below the above the line to perform below the line tasks. And a hundred billion dollars a year by the end of this decade is moving from below to above the line, from promotion, direct marketing, PR, events, into media partners who can help them through digital create and connect to the consumer. So we've got a hundred billion dollar opportunity to grow our business, to grow the advertising business, but we need to be digital to be there. And I know this industry is moving in that direction, and while 8.5% roughly of total revenues today in out of home are digital, I know for many of you it's significantly more than that.
So big data, below the line, and third, creativity. I'm not a creative expert. I know this community is not focused on the creative, but it's fundamental for every medium, and especially the out-of-home and the digital out-of-home business, to focus on the creative partners and the creative agencies. They are, at the creative agency side, bringing in media people. They unbundled 10, 15 years ago. Today, they're rebundling, not organizationally, but creative agencies are bringing in media experts. Media agencies are bringing in creative experts. These are core and key people for this industry to communicate with. So those are the three ideas, big data, go after the below the line with digital support and creative.